The answer ended up being pretty clear cut. Yeah. Uh, my my parents were obviously overjoyed, and my dad even called me to to, to, to tell me that Harvard was the right choice. We all, I, I feel like I ended up just making the decision based off of all that and signed the paperwork and and didn't look back. Hey, Kathleen, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing, Harold? Been a few years. Been a few years. So that's part of, that's a real jumping off point. So Kathleen, just for the folks who are watching now, take us back in time and just tell us who you are, your classic interview question. Just tell me about yourself. I'm from California. So I was in San Francisco. I worked at that point when I was interviewing four years. Um, did the classic investment banking, went into venture capital, investing in fintech companies, and um, was deciding to how, how best to spend my time the year before I knew I wanted to go to business school. So at that point in time, I was um, applying to business schools and also starting a new job in, in a startup as well. So it was actually an interesting point in my life where there were a lot of options um, out there. And there was also MBA, the MBA process. So I, I did both of those at the same time. And it was um, it was really fun. I remember. So tell me just where are you now? Uh, and, and what ended up happening with business school? And what are you doing now? I worked with MBA Mission, worked with Harold specifically. And he helped me get into Harvard Business School. And I had a blast there. I did want to go back into investing post-business school. As, as much as I wanted to explore, I still want to do tech investing. And so now I'm doing tech private equity in Denver of all places, but it's it's been fun so far and I've gotten a lot of exposure to a lot of the companies and types of companies I'm looking forward to investing in and kind of working with in the future. Post then, it's it's been good, just a new life. I'm optimistic about what's happening and what's gonna come because there's so much to look forward to and I think business school helped me kind of get into the mindset of doing all that. That makes sense. So Kathleen, it was always funny to me in the sense of you were doing some really exciting things before business school. In fact, you were doing some things that I always felt like, and we talked about it, that your classmates would want to do after they got their MBA. So, so just fill us in a little bit in terms of what was the decision-making process for you to go back to school? It was in some clear cut. I know there's a lot of people out there who are looking to, um, they're looking really early. They're thinking, oh, in, in undergrad, I'm going to go back to business school. Um, for me, that, that process actually came a few years down the line. So a few months before I spoke to you, that was when I made my decision to apply to school. And it was it was more so a, a combination decision. I think like at that point in time I had, um, I definitely had the a career that I could spring leap off of. And I, I think the biggest, the biggest thing I was trying to figure out is what to do in my next few years that would involve the most adventure, change, and growth. So thinking about all that, it um, it made me really want to consider business school and seeing the the senior people in my field and investing private equity venture capital. A lot of people have that business school experience, and and I spoke to maybe two or three dozen of them prior to making a decision to come back. And obviously, once I got in, I made another I made another effort to reach back out to them um, to to ask their opinion as well. But it wasn't purely a decision based on something that I've always thought I want to do. It was something more of this seems like a really good way to invest my time the next two years. Oh, no, terrific then. So just to take a big step backwards here, I think when we first met, it was right after you made the decision to go to business school. I mean, it was really pretty fresh. So tell me just about how you approached that decision as well as how MBA mission or, or how I helped you through the process. When we met, I was already in the process of figuring out how to just tackle the applications. So at the start, it was pretty daunting, right? There's a lot of things to consider when you put in your application, all the deadlines, round one, two, three, all very, all very thing, all things that you haven't really touched for, for years, right? Since undergrad. And so you and MBA Mission have been particularly helpful with, with reorienting um, the process as something that's daunting into something very doable, very step-by-step, step-by-step um, -step practical. And I think the biggest thing that you all helped me with was my essay. So I think most of my other parts of the application was already, I'd say, more more teed up. It was straightforward, like the the undergrad GPA, the the GRE and GMAT, like the scores were were good. I think the the thing that what I needed most help with was the essay. And I think it was particularly helpful having you and you know your your colleagues at MBA Mission really narrow down or at so, more so help me craft that 
you know, that, that daunting, <laughs> that daunting personal statement and the iterations that we went through and the, the different inputs and ways to think about how your experience could tie to other things was particularly helpful. And I think that definitely played a big impact in, um, on me getting into all the schools that we applied to together, I guess. That's right. So obviously you got into some other schools and even I remember some of the scholarships. So just how were you thinking about it? How were you thinking about things when it came that, to that decision? That was tough because my initial plan was was just to do round one and then see what happens. And if any, you know, if anything, do round two. But when they all came back positively in round one, it was actually pretty confusing. And I I ended up speaking to a lot of alumni from the the, the schools themselves and went on to to ask them like, you know, what's your, like candidly, like what would, how would you make this decision if you were back in my shoes? And um, the answer ended up being pretty clear cut. Yeah. Um, my, my parents were obviously overjoyed and my dad even called me to, to, to tell me that Harvard was the right choice. We all, I, I'd say like, I ended up just making the decision based off of all that and signed the paperwork and, and didn't look back. And, and there you go. T terrific then. Good. And as far as just the resources you think you needed to go through the application process, obviously working with me was one of them. Are there other things that you found particularly valuable, just whether it's on your own or you and I working together on, on something? I'm a big reader. So like general guides and books. Um, and, and I already mentioned like the speaking to alumni and other people who went through the process. I think those are all, all really good ways to, um, to, to, to get oriented. And I think even even doing little things like speaking to your boss, speaking to your past colleagues um, and all, I think those are all very helpful pieces. I don't think you need as much as much data as you as you think you do to begin the journey. And I think just going head in and then looking around and taking things as they come, if you start early enough, um, is enough. I definitely think I was on the uh, the later side of starting and it still all worked out because of you and MBA mission. So I think the the biggest part is just just getting started early, um, but it's also doable if you do it more on the uh, the last minute side, like I did. <laughs> yeah, no, we made it work. Needless to say, we, we made it work. We always do. So if I am two years before I want to go to business school, let's say I'm an associate at a venture capital firm, spend some time with me, banking. Uh, what sort of advice do you have, both in terms of applying to business school, being the strongest candidate? There's so many things you can do um, for yourself and also for the application. And I would really start reflecting early on, like what makes you tick, what makes you interested, what makes you excited. And I think you'd be surprised by how, um, unless you already know yourself very well, but how how much you haven't explored, um, I'd say career-wise, personal-wise, and also just, 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 I think, like doing-wise. So I think do as much as you can. I would pr prioritize uh, focusing on things that maybe are community-based. If that is nonprofit volunteering for you, that's great. If it's leadership in the VC community, that's fun. If it's throwing massive parties for VC associates, that's also great. But notice where your energy is going, how it's spent, and the return you get from that. And I think it really helps you develop as a, as a person to know where you find the most energy. And I think it's different for everybody. And I think you'd be surprised by what gives you energy when you start doing 10 to 20 different things you've never done before. And I think that exploration is valuable even post MBA, but I think pre MBA, it's, it's also great. Uh, Kathleen, I'm going to ask you a question that you may not be able to answer. I may not be able to answer is the HBS gets about 10,000 applications a year. At that point, the class size is only what about a thousand less than that. Um, what do you think you got in? Um, <laughs> that is a good question. I would have to ask my um, the one who interviewed me, but I I think it's um, a little bit of luck because um, I do feel fortunate and very grateful to have gotten in. Um, it could be also the the energy that um, generally I'm pretty optimistic, very forward oriented, but also in the present very happy and looking for opportunities wherever there are. Um, and I think that played a role into into it. And I think the scores and GPA, I think those are something that is just table stakes for anyone applying. And I think the essay helped a lot as well. But I think holistically, I mean, I try to be optimistic when I can. And I, I hope that energy uh, 
help me get in one way or another. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Listen, I always saw you as an upbeat person. You were really easy to work with. And I think one of the reasons is you are actually quite reflective. And I think what I'll tell my clients is certainly being honest, being reflective is a hard process when all said and done. Um, so now uh, one other very small point here. HBS is notorious for a very hard interview. How was your interview? What was your interview experience like if you uh, if you look back? Yeah, well, I didn't travel to Boston for this one. Um, I think maybe it was a function of just having applicants from all over the world. Mine was actually in California. Um, the interview process was actually a lot more of a conversation than it felt like an interrogation. And I, I still remember the one who interviewed me, and she was very professional, very... Um, inquisitive about the decisions I made and why. The biggest part was and why. And I think that part of it is something that everyone should think about before, or I'm more so in preparation of that interview. I think there's a lot of a lot of ways how this can go. And I think my process specifically was more like a conversation, more like figuring out um, the linearity or lack thereof of you know the experience so far. I think it's really easy to weave what you've lived through as a, a linear connect the dots activity. But but in actuality, it's all it's all just data points on a screen. And you're the one who has to craft that linear or not linear story as to why, you know, a certain way had happened the way it is and how and why you view it that way. And I think that's the challenging part. But I think it's it was a very rewarding part for me during the process. But overall, I think the interview process was was very conversational. And I think it um it definitely made me comfortable afterwards to think of think that you know it went that way yeah, great then and obviously you must have done something well because the uh, yeah no, the numbers for an interview i think about 40 percent of the people who are interviewed actually get in so uh, again it's really uh, a process to go through so the way obviously we've covered a lot of ground again i throw the uh i throw the um floor to you anything else you just want to say about again, the process, business school, whatever it might be. Yeah, I think when it comes to the whole the whole process and deciding to do it, I think it's important to listen to your gut um, as, as much as you can. This is um, not only um, in an intellectual, intellectual journey, it's also an emotional journey, a physical journey. It's, it's everything. It's a holistic journey, right? So I think being in tune with how you think and feel is important throughout this whole thing. So I would only start this process if you want to do it, right? It shouldn't be a requirement. It's not something you have to put a check mark, up, bo check mark box on. It's something that you should do if you're excited for it. And I think if once you commit to joining, I think it's important to, to be all in. Don't be like, I could have done this or this. Like once you commit, just close the other door, jump all the way in and embrace the whole situation. So that's how, that's how I feel. Make it an adventure. Go somewhere you think you'll you'll love, and I think if you put in that effort and energy, it'll be all worth it at the end.